and welcome to our new podcast channel, Advocate by ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights, or APHR. This is a four-part series, Parliamentarians at Risk. I'm Oliver Slow. This episode looks at the current situation in Cambodia, where the increasingly despotic rule of Prime Minister Hun Sen has led to the eradication of all political opposition, as well as a systematic crackdown on dissent. This series, part of a wider research project by APHR, aims to draw attention to the scale and consequences of the human rights violations faced by MPs in the region and their impacts on democracy and society as a whole. These reprisals come in the form of, among others, judicial harassment, surveillance and being arbitrarily stripped of their parliamentary status. APHR's new report on this important topic, Parliamentarians at Risk, Reprisals Against Opposition MPs in Southeast Asia, is available on our website at ASEANMP.org. This episode is part of our new podcast channel, Advocate, by ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights. Please share, subscribe and leave reviews wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. Every Friday for the last several months, dozens of mainly female protesters have held demonstrations in front of the Phnom Penh Municipal Court building in the Cambodian capital. Those demonstrating are relatives of the more than 20 members and activists from the Cambodian National Rescue Party, or CNRP, who have been arrested amid an increased crackdown on dissent by Prime Minister Hun Sen in recent years. The CNRP, the only viable opposition party in Cambodia, was dissolved by the country's Supreme Court in November 2017 and hundreds of its members banned from politics. During the recent protests in Phnom Penh, the thuggish tactics of Hun Sen's police have been on full display. In a number of videos shared on social media, police officers can be seen aggressively pushing female protesters as well as dragging them along the tarmac ground. One video that caused particular outrage shows a police officer striking one of the demonstrators to the ground, seemingly knocking her unconscious. Among those protesting is Heng Bore whose father, Heng Chan Sothi, was arrested in early June at his home in the west of Phnom Penh. Heng Chan Sothi is acting president of CNRP's Poor Senche District Executive Committee and is accused of plotting and inciting serious chaos to national security. <laughs> Heng Bore told reporters that her father was arrested in the middle of the street and surrounded by police, quote, like a criminal. He was then forced into a car, she said. Despite the intimidation of violence against those protesting at the Phnom Penh courthouse, Heng Bore said she refuses to give up. She explains, I already thought that if I came to protest, I would face disruption, getting picked up or thrown on the streets or arrested or even imprisonment like my father. We do not surrender nor give up despite many problems. She also called on the international community and civil society organisations to intervene for the release of her father and other political prisoners. The widespread arrests of CNRP members and other government critics are part of a wider crackdown on fundamental freedoms that have escalated in recent years under Hun Sen's increasingly authoritarian regime. He has also shuttered independent media outlets and used the COVID-19 pandemic, which has crippled Cambodia's economy, to introduce increasingly repressive laws. Freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, as well as freedom of association are still uh, restricted. The people have no control whatsoever, no voice whatsoever. It will be a Cambodia that is purely uh, controlled by one family, by one man, by one party. That's not the Cambodia that we want. Elections now have become much more ritualized and they no longer have much meaning. Human rights-wise, the situation could be worse. You, you've got people who write on Facebook about fearing that they're going to lose their job in factories, ending up in, in prison, in jail for two months. Incredible. The human rights situation in Cambodia today is dire. The dissolution of the CNRP paved the way for single-party rule in Cambodia. Without any opposition in Parliament, in the last few years, Hun Sen and his allies have pushed through increasingly repressive legislation and further eroded the fundamental rights of the people of Cambodia, including freedom of speech, association and peaceful assembly. Hun Sen is one of the world's longest rulers, 
having been Cambodia's Prime Minister since the 1980s, taking control as the country returned to democracy after the civil war and the devastating rule of the Khmer Rouge. But he has long faced accusations of fostering a culture of corruption and impunity among the country's political elite, and in 2012, the Cambodian National Rescue Party was formed to compete in the following year's election and challenge Hun Sen's grip on power. The CNRP campaigned on a platform of social justice and a pluralistic liberal democracy. It was a message that worked. The CNRP received about 45% of votes in the 2013 general election, closely behind Hun Sen's Cambodian People's Party, or CPP. Mu Sokua, an APHR board member now living in exile, was one of the CNRP's founding members and an elected MP. The Cambodian National Rescue Party, the main opposition party, gained a tremendous support and respect and trust from half of the voters in the country, of six million voters. So we had over three million voters supporting us at the election of 2013. She said that the CNRP's success in the 2013 election was because Cambodian people were tired of the corruption-ridden rule of Hun Sen. Corruption and violence and violations of human rights are part of life in Cambodia. And people at the grassroots level, people even at the top level of the government are aware of the level of corruption, are aware of the level of injustice, of economic injustice, social injustice, political injustice. People are fed up. People don't see a Cambodia that can be free without a change of government. Shortly after the 2013 election, widespread anti-government demonstrations broke out in Phnom Penh. Here's a Phnom Penh Post video report from December 2013. It's hard to estimate just how many showed up, but the protest dwarfs earlier ones, with officials estimating the turnout as high as 100,000. The group had threatened to block national roads leading into the city, an action the government has expressly forbidden. By marching in such numbers, they are effectively doing the same thing, right in the heart of the city. The protests were initially triggered by allegations of voter fraud against Hun Sen, but soon morphed into calls for him to resign triggered by anger at his regime, as well as the poor quality of life for many people in the country. The demonstrations increased in intensity in late December 2013, when workers from the country's garment factories, the bedrock of Cambodia's economy, joined the protest to call for an increase in the minimum wage. The crackdown started shortly after. In early January 2014, military police fired the protesters, killing at least five people and injuring dozens. After months of tensions, the protests were eventually brought to a halt in the middle of 2014, as authorities dismantled structures at Phnom Penh's Freedom Park, the main protest site, and arrested opposition MPs, including APHR's Musakua, who was later released. Hun Sen didn't cede to the protesters' demands for him to resign, however, and as Cambodia moved towards communal elections in 2017, the Prime Minister increased his crackdown, included by jailing and harassing critics. One prominent government critic, Kem Le, was brazenly gunned down in broad daylight in central Phnom Penh in July 2016. There's been no meaningful investigation into his death. Despite a heavily flawed vote in the commune-level elections of 2017, with accusations against the government, including voter intimidation and biased media coverage in favour of the ruling party, the CNRP captured more than 3 million votes, or just over 40%, slightly behind the CPP. Within months of the poll, however, the CNRP had been dissolved by Cambodia's Supreme Court, accused of plotting to overthrow the government. 118 of its senior members were banned from politics for five years. Immediately, opposition voices had been removed from Cambodia's parliament, and the millions who had voted for the party in the election were effectively disenfranchised. At the time, APHR's chair, Charles Santiago, said the dissolution of the CNRP was, quote, the final nail in the coffin for Cambodian democracy. Kem Sokka, the president of the CNRP, was also arrested and charged with treason for allegedly conspiring with a foreign power to overthrow the Cambodian government. He was held in a detention centre in southeastern Cambodia, near the border with Vietnam, for more than a year before he was placed under house arrest. In November 2019, he was allowed to leave his home on the condition that he does not participate in political activities or travel abroad 
and continues to cooperate with judicial investigators. His trial continues, and if found guilty, he could face up to 30 years in prison. The CNRP's former leader, Sam Ranzi, was already in exile before the vote. And shortly after the CNRP was dissolved, Musokua said she knew her own arrest was imminent and fled the country. In Cambodia, she now has at least three charges against her, including for treason, inciting the military, and incitement to cause public disorder and social unrest. All charges carry a maximum prison sentence of more than 20 years. The Cambodian government has also since revoked her passport. In November 2019, Musokua and other CNRP members attempted to return to Cambodia, but were prevented from boarding flights into the country. Ahead of their planned return, authorities announced that they had sent arrest warrants for CNRP co-founder Sam Ranzi to all neighbouring countries, had deployed troops along the Cambodia-Thailand border, and threatened to use armed force to suppress the opposition. Musakua was detained in Malaysia while trying to get back to Cambodia, and released after intervention from APHR and other human rights groups. I'm not the only one who fled the country. Many mm. top leaders of the opposition fled the country. We are dispersed at all, all over the world. Those who stay inside the country stay um, below uh, the radar of Mr. Hun Sen, uh, extremely careful about not communicating with us, even on social media, even uh, through uh, WhatsApp or Signal. A total disconnect. Cambodia held a national election in 2018, but with the only effective opposition party removed from politics, Hun Sen's CPP swept up all 125 seats in the National Assembly. Hun Sen does not appear to be willing to give up his power anytime soon, and the 68-year-old has indicated that he's making plans for his son, Hun Manet, to succeed him. Hun Sen has already made his son the commander of the Cambodian army. Journalist Sebastian Strangio, author of the book Hun Sen's Cambodia, said that the last three years had seen a drastic tightening of political space in Cambodia. The approximate cause has been the rise of the Cambodian National Rescue Party and the threat that this poses to the CPP's power. So the 2013 election saw the CNRP garner a significant share of the vote. They cut deeply into the CPP's majority in the National Assembly, and the CPP was concerned that the next election in 2018 would see even greater gains by the party and could potentially catalyze some sort of political shift. And so they took that challenge very seriously. Initially, they attempted to tighten the screws just enough to discourage people and scare them off. That didn't work out. The 2017 commune elections, the CNRP scored similar gains as to what they did at the 2013 national election. But after that, I think that the, the CPP decided that you know enough was enough and that they were going to nip this challenge in the bud. He said that the deteriorating rights conditions in Cambodia are also linked to the rising influence of China, its top source of aid and investment, which has reduced the country's reliance on typically Western donors who support its contingent from Phnom Penh's promotion of democracy and human rights. I think the, the enabling factor in this is the support of China because previously the, there were Western scrutiny. It never really created democracy in Cambodia, but it sort of put limits on how far Hun Sen could go in suppressing protesters or cracking down on human rights defenders or the independent press. This is one of the reasons that they have readily embraced the Chinese sales pitch, because this is financial support minus these types of conditionalities and strings. So it's becoming increasingly difficult to know what the international community can do of this in Cambodia. It's, I think that in some senses, this demonstrates the limitations of attempting to implant change from the outside. The human rights situation in Cambodia has grown even worse in recent months, during the coronavirus pandemic. Officially, Cambodia has recorded about 300 confirmed cases and zero deaths. But the global shutdown caused by the virus has decimated the country's economy, particularly its garment and tourism industries, which employ a significant chunk of the country's workforce. Hundreds of factories have reportedly asked the government for permission to suspend their operations, either partly or entirely due to the virus, leading to demonstrations from garment workers. Cambodia's economy took a further hit in August, when the European Union withdrew part of its preferences granted under its Everything But Arms scheme, due to the, quote, serious and systematic violations of human rights principles in the country. The move will affect about a fifth of Cambodia's exports to the EU, notably in the garment sector. Kun Tharo is Programme Coordinator for the local NGO Centre for Alliance of Labour and Human Rights, or Central. He told APHR that factory workers in particular have been affected by the economic fallout of the coronavirus crisis. 
we think that there is a continuing of uh, effects of the factory closures. Uh, workers are facing wages issue, unpaid wages, factory closed down without paying worker compensation in accordance with the law, and illegal suspensions, uh, which is workers are not getting a proper compensations, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, as well as freedom of association are still uh, restricted with this uh, situation of a COVID crisis and the lack of the intervention from the government is brought the uh, uh, angry, you know, among the working class. You've seen the numbers of protests going on uh, at the factories and continuing numbers of factories are going to shut down. <laughs> As well as the protests from garment workers and the relatives of detained CNRP members, there have also been demonstrations related to the arrest of prominent activist Rong Chun. Rong Chun, who is president of the Cambodian Confederation of Unions, was detained in late July and is charged with incitement to commit felony, following comments he made to the media about land issues for farmers close to the Cambodia-Vietnam border. According to Human Rights Watch, 11 people protesting Rong Chun's arrest have been detained in recent weeks, as have at least three youth activists. People expressing fear or concerns about the coronavirus have also been detained. In March, police arrested and questioned a 14-year-old girl in Kampot province after she expressed fears on social media about rumours of positive COVID-19 cases in her school and local area. Some of those arrested have been released after signing pledges not to spread fake news in the future and to apologise. Meanwhile, the crackdown on the CNRP only continues. Since March, APHR has documented at least 22 members or activists from the CNRP being arrested by Hun Sen's regime. All are facing vague charges related to plotting, inciting military personnel to disobedience, or incitement to commit a felony. In addition, Hun Sen and the CPP have used their position of power to introduce increasingly repressive laws in recent months. In April, the government introduced what right groups have said is an unnecessary and draconian state of emergency law that provides authorities with broad and unchecked powers to restrict freedom of expression, peaceful assembly and association. The government has also written the draft law on public order, ostensibly to regulate public spaces and public behaviour in those spaces, but which could, quote, become yet another piece of repressive legislation in a legal framework that severely undermines human rights. Sofal Ir, a Cambodian-American academic, said that the lack of any viable opposition party in Cambodia has contributed to the deteriorating human rights situation. When you don't have a viable opposition party or when the, the only opposition party is essentially erased from the picture, not of its own will, but really by the ruling party. It means a total lack of accountability and inability then to speak up when there are problems, no escape valve in terms of being able to press any kind of differing opinion and uh, a total lack, I think, of sensitivity to the needs of the people. Even under the state of emergency declaration that was passed as a, under the pretext of COVID-19, uh, the language of that state of emergency law uh, appears to include essentially anything that the ruling party feels is somehow not in concordance with, with their thinking could result in essentially the invocation of, of this uh, state of emergency. And so it's really, it's really a setup for, for not COVID-19 per se, but for anything that could happen in the future that, that displeases them, everything could be suspended and you could be arrested. Yet those fighting for a return to democracy in Cambodia have not given up hope. Musakua said she hopes to be able to return safely to her country and contribute to its development. We call for the next election to be prepared now so that uh, we can go back to compete. We call for a reform in a national election commission so that we can ensure free and fair elections. Very unlikely, but still, we believe that with the international community, with ASEAN uh, communities, with pressure from uh, democratic countries and with the people inside Cambodia to work together so that uh, we can move Cambodia forward. This episode of APHR's Parliamentarians at Risk podcast series was written and produced by me, Oliver Slow, with editorial input from Elise T.A. Degusset. Thanks also to Daniel Quinlan. 
APHR's work is supported by the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, or CEDA, the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Open Societies Foundation. For more information about APHR's work, please visit our website, ASEANMP.org. This series is from our new podcast channel, Advocate by ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights. Please share, subscribe, and leave reviews wherever you get your podcasts. The next episode will be available from October 14th. Thanks for listening.